Welcome everyone to a new video of the Enhanced Sampling Series of the MobileChem YouTube channel. In today's chapter, we will be discussing about metadynamics. So again, we are facing the problem of sampling the reaction coordinate of a process that presents a high energy barrier. In standard molecular dynamic simulations, the population of the system would be trapped in state A and the conformational space of B won't be sampled. However, by means of enhanced sampling techniques, we are able to accelerate the dynamics to populate B and the pathway that connects these two states. In the case of metadynamics, the free energy surface of the system doesn't have to be known aforehand, although it's important to have an idea on the degrees of freedoms that are relevant to the process because a set of collective variables have to be selected before beginning the simulation. Within the space of collective variables, Gaussian functions are regularly added to the potential of the system with an invariant deposition rate. This procedure sequentially fills the basins of the potential energy surface and allows the system to evolve from the initial conformation state to the rest in increasing order of energy barrier. Equation 1 shows the shape of this Gaussian function, where S represents the set of collective variables sigma the width of the Gaussian function for each of the collective variables, and omega the deposition rate. Moreover, the center of the deposited Gaussian is dependent on the evolution of the collective over time, and its width and height are input parameters that control the simulation. In the beginning of the simulation, the system is trapped and the non-configuration begins to be sampled. As the time passes, the number of cumulated Gaussian functions increases, and so the bias potential. This allows the system to explore a wider range of motion. At a certain moment, the bias energy of the system reaches the energy of a barrier between states, and the system falls into a new minimum of the free energy surface, where no Gaussian functions were previously added, a region in which there is no bias potential yet. Hence, leaving the system trapped in the new conformation to be sampled. Therefore, within this formulation, the trajectory in the collective variable space is able to avoid previously sampled configurations. Since the Gaussian functions are accumulated along the collective variable space, over time, it's clear that the metadynamic simulations are history dependent. When this count of Gaussian functions is plotted over time, it can be observed that for long simulation times, the shape of the Gaussian tends toward that of the potential energy surface. In fact, if one takes the potential energy surface, turns it upside down, and compares it with the histogram, it is shown that actually the bias potential converges to minus the unbiased free energy up to a constant. Although this is just a qualitative demonstration, but the details can be found in the first reference here. However, if we focus again in the evolution of the histogram, it is possible to observe that it presents jumps, which means that it doesn't converge smoothly to the free energy surface, and so the bias potential oscillates. Therefore, more than one single run is needed to reach a good convergence. Because of this, the free energy surface can present overfilling, which means that the computed energy is larger than it should, and that leads the system to explore high energy regions in the collective variable space. Additionally, the choice on when to stop the simulation is not trivial. However, in the cases in which only the closest saddle point is required, it can be stopped just after the system reaches the next vessel. Otherwise, if one is interested in the whole reconstruction of the free energy surface, a general rule is to stop the simulation when the motion of the collective variables becomes diffusion in the region of interest. Additionally, another problem of metadynamics is the selection of a proper collective variable space, about which I will talk a little bit later on. To solve the convergence problem, the well-tempered metadynamics was developed. In this case, the deposition rate is decreased over time. To achieve this, the bias potential and its time derivative can be described as shown in equations 5 and 6, where delta t is a new input parameter that controls how quickly the Gaussian height is decreased. n is the histogram of the s variables, 
omega sub zero the initial deposition rate and delta the time derivative of n. Here, the time derivative of the bias potential has been rewritten by reshaping expression 5 and substituting the denominator of the fraction. Within this formulation, the bias potential does not convert exactly to the free energy, but to a factor of it. However, it does convert in a single run. If the time derivative of the histogram is defined as a Gaussian function, then the time derivative of the bias can be written as this expression here. If this expression is compared to that of standard metadynamics, it can be observed that the only difference between them is an exponential factor. That is a function of the bias potential and delta t. Therefore, the only practical difference between the two methods is the definition on the height of the Gaussian function added to the bias. Actually, well-tempered metadynamics presents an intermediate approach between standard molecular mechanics and standard metadynamics. In the case in which delta t tends to zero, the exponent of e would tend to minus infinity. And so, the height of the Gaussian function and the bias potential itself would tend to zero. This corresponds to the case of standard molecular dynamics. On the other hand, when delta t tends to infinity, the exponent becomes very small, and the exponential part is equal to 1. Therefore, the deposition rate is not modified with time, and the expression for the height becomes that of standard metadynamics. Before finishing, I would like to do some remarks on the selection of the collective variable space. First of all, it's very important that they are able to distinguish not only between the initial and the final states, but also between the relevant intermediates. For example, in a system of four atoms like the one presented here, one could choose to sample the interatomic distance between the reactive species. Additionally, the number of considered collective variables should be small. Therefore, taking into account the proposed intermediate one could think about this reduction of variables in which each collective variable is expressed in terms of two interatomic distances, since when one of them shortens, the other enlarges. However, by doing so, one could be neglecting some non-previously considered intermediate or other slow, slower modes, which also leads to overfilling of the free energy surface, since hidden slow modes slow down the sampling. Therefore, it's very important to think in advance about the problem ahead because the result could lead to unphysical situations. In summary, to run a metadynamic simulation, one has first to choose the set of collective variables that will be accelerated during the simulation. This selection is crucial to have a physical result of the free energy surface that is directly related to the applied bias potential. Moreover, the reduction of the deposition rate over time achieved by well-tempered metadynamics allows to converge the free energy in a single round and provides an intermediate description between molecular dynamics and metadynamics. Thank you all for your attention and see you in next video.